welcome to the news. So, what's been happening? Here's a tip. If you're going to stand behind a live interview, careful where you put your hands. Well, and that is the key word, yeah, hopeful, that a pair of gloves will be in touch Over at Channel 4, Matt Fry wins my award for quickest face change ever. Andy Davis reporting from Rill. Now, after the break, from the prince to the former president, a sex scandal, a convicted paedophile, and the connections he had with some of the most powerful women. See if you can spot the exact moment someone popped a finger up this guy's ass. It's of dealing with a, a difficult incident when it's in the middle of a difficult incident. <laughs> and finally, this young man gives the finest interview I've ever seen on BBC Breakfast. Yes, very sadly, this, this liver needs, needs to be replaced. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so there will be more people on the register because it will be automatic. But obviously, those people still need to make their wishes known to their next of kin because a next of kin can still override. There you go. Oh, Tracy's going to look after you. There you go, Harry. Go and say hello, um, Tracy. Okay. Yeah, Tracy's going to catch him. Sorry, she's going <laughs> to okay. catch him. Um, just tell us a little bit about. Oh, oh he's back. <laughs> OK. You're going to leave that there. Sorry. <laughs> Tell you what. I want to talk about what it is like waiting, and I'm just going to wait until he's safely with Tracy. <laughs> now, the big news of the week was definitely this. MPs have voted in favour of launching airstrikes against the so-called Islamic State in Syria. Within an hour of MPs approving operations, the RAF had dispatched jets from their base in Cyprus. 67 Labour MPs defied their party leader Jeremy Corbyn and voted with the government. Corbyn lost his battle with Cameron to not bomb Syria after a heated debate with Labour MPs. How angry were they? Ridiculously so. Look at this. Apparently, some of his MPs were so angry they had to be scraped <laughs> off the ceiling. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> I am livid! <laughs> Cover me in super glue and fetch my trampoline! <laughs> Our politicians shouldn't be angry. They should be calm. The world is so tense at the moment. I mean, did you see what Turkey did? A Russian fighter jet has been shot down by Turkish forces along its border with Syria. What are you doing, Turkey? <laughs> Don't start on Russia! <laughs> it's like Warwick Davies flicking an orc in the bollocks. <laughs> Just... Oh, damn. Do you want to did you see how long they waited before they shot the plane down? The Russian jet was in Turkish airspace for just 17 seconds. 17 seconds? I've done farts longer than that. <laughs> what were they thinking? Mr. President, there's been a Russian plane in our airspace for 12 seconds. Shall we blow it out of the sky and potentially start World War III? Whoa, no! Everybody calm down! <laughs> Give it five more seconds. <laughs> we don't want to come across as crazy. <laughs> All the people to wind up, why would you pick on Vladimir Putin? He's not exactly balanced. Or, as this guy puts it... Putin's a nutter. <laughs> Damn right he is. What other leader goes to the UN and gives himself a strangle wank? <laughs> Russian military experts aren't exactly sane. They should level the score and maybe teach Turkey a lesson and shoot down a Turkish plane in response. That's how wars start, though, isn't it? That could lead to an escalation. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> the world is so messed up at the moment. Everywhere you turn, there's horror. I mean, did you see what happened in America this week? President Obama has made another call for tighter gun control following the shooting at an abortion clinic in Colorado, which left three people dead. Police say the gunman was a 57-year-old man who gave himself up after a shootout with police. He's a 57-year-old fuckwit. He shot... <laughs> he is! He shot three people at an abortion clinic cos he was pro-life. <laughs> How can you be pro-life and shoot someone? <laughs> Killing people! <laughs> or I'll kill you! <laughs> the lunacy gets worse. Some people actually went on Twitter and praised him. 
No sympathy for any pregnant female who was injured in the Planned Parenthood shooting and was there to get an abortion. She deserved it. No, she didn't, you stupid gimp! <laughs> Women don't have abortions for a laugh. They do it because they're scared, they're young, they may have been raped, and maybe they don't want to bring a baby into a world where morons shoot pregnant women. I'm pro-life! If you're so pro-life, why don't you fuck off and get one? <laughs> Abortion is a personal choice, and sometimes refusing one can have grave consequences. Patty Millette became pregnant at age 17 and was pushed towards abortion but refused. That baby later became known as Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> baby, 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 no. <laughs> Tell you also feel sorry for Obama. Every time there's a shooting, you see him on the news like a broken man. As a country, we have been through this too many times. There's nothing normal about our children being gunned down in their classrooms. Part of what makes this so painful is that we've been here before. We talked about this after Columbine and Blacksburg, after Tucson, uh, after Newtown, after Aurora, after Charleston. Look at him. Look at him. He's on the verge of tears. But what can he do? America has such a gun-obsessed culture. I mean, where else would you see a product like this? Anna Henry is giving the meaning of girl power a whole new round of ammo. With the breakaway tab, you can quickly grab it and pop it right out. Armed and ready at any moment's notice, the Topeka native shows off her very own concealed carry corset. She's invented knickers <laughs> that hold guns. Who needs a told-up fanny? Nobody! <laughs> <laughs> but then what hope did she have when her granddad, her granddad, taught her bullshit like this? The company based in Kansas City, Missouri, is named for her grandfather, Dean Adams, a Topeka man who taught Henry a gun is no different than a lawnmower. <laughs> Drive-by streaming. Don't <laughs> see nutters going to the schools with fly mows. Just come here. <laughs> come here. <laughs> I can't reach you with the cable. Come here. <laughs> so what else? Well, Black Friday happened last year. We saw this. The rush to find a Black Friday bargain descended into chaos and, in some places, violence today. The loser, a little bit of British decorum. Go for it! Thousands of people punching each other for tellies. This year, not quite so chaotic. They opened early for business in Norwich, but they needn't have bothered. There wasn't a shopper in sight. You're the only one here, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody turned up. It was wonderful. Look at the plans they put in place at Debenhams. Debenhams, we're standing outside. They laid on a thousand staff from 4:30 in the morning. Each of them had a little survival bag ready for the onslaught. Survival bag. <laughs> Get ready. Any second. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think they're coming. <laughs> I bought a shield. <laughs> I just didn't give a shit. Americans, were they excited about Black Friday? What do you think? Yeah, I'm better! Jarvis Johnson. He was so giddy about Black Friday, he camped outside that shop for a week. He became an <laughs> internet sensation. 30 million people watched him online. He may he like a bargain, but his math skills are appalling. They said we hit over 30 million views in less than a week. 30 million views in less than a week. And if you, if you, if you really did the math on that, 30 million a week? 
Oh my gosh, 8, 16, 24, 32. That's almost 9 million views a day. Almost. Let me do the math on that. 7, 14, 21, 28. So let's do. Okay. Retract the math. Retract the math. Um, what was it? Three times seven? <laughs> I love it so much. But that's nothing. My favorite bit was when he was interviewed in his tent, and then this happened. You are also a freestyle rapper. Give me a little rap about Black Friday. Yo, check it, check it, check it out. I hope you like the price, because they're very, very nice. I'm doing what I do. I'm trying to get a TV just for you. Ooh, 149 for a 49 itch. I hope you like the TV, because I like it too. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> about shopping. <laughs> I like shopping, check the dollar that I spend. Makes me feel like dancing in my big ass tent. People be hating like you a stupid fool. Well, joke's on them, I'm collecting vouchers for school. <laughs> On Monday, I got four vouchers. Tuesday, I got five. So what's that? What's that? Four plus five, what's that? It's 17, is that? Like, no, maybe that's done. <laughs> no, no, maybe it's 11 plus 12, is that? Like, maybe it's, like, if you carry, hang on, like, four plus four is 179, I don't know. Um, um, are we trying to map? Are we trying to map? Political news, the unthinkable happened. As U-turns go, it was a pretty big one. The Chancellor, George Osborne, has scrapped his controversial plans to cut tax credits for millions of low-paid workers. So weird, isn't it? George Osborne's done something nice. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world's changed. <laughs> Poor next, Joey Essex on QI. <laughs> <laughs> Me. I was so excited by this. I thought maybe, maybe the Tory party have changed. Maybe they're going to start listening to us. And then I read about this wanker. <laughs> That's Philip Davies. Remember him? A few weeks ago, he spoke for 93 minutes so that a bill to give carers free hospital parking couldn't be debated. Well, guess what? Philip Davies does it again. Tory Winback talks for 52 minutes against law to teach pupils first aid. What an arsehole! I don't want kids learning about first aid. I want them to learn relevant things that will help them today, like Latin and the recorder. <laughs> it's such bullshit. I've put someone in the recovery position. I've never been at a party and gone, I know what this needs. <laughs> Some girl in the corner, Dominus Meus, Russell, Dominus Meus. <laughs> it gets even more ludicrous. Did you see the reason why he wanted this bill blocked? He'd been taught first aid at school, but had forgotten what he was taught. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? <laughs> Don't learn things that I forgot. <laughs> Kids shouldn't be punished just because you're a shit for brains. <laughs> Does my head in this bloke? What I want to know, how is he allowed to get away with filibustering? Basically, what he does, he speaks for long enough so that important things can't be discussed in Parliament. That's what filibustering is. He just talks bollocks to stop democracy. Well, if he's allowed to make stuff up to pass the time, then so am I. <laughs> Philip Davies can only shit if a cat watches him. <laughs> what? What? I'm just filibustering. <laughs> Philip Davies... Philip Davies loves to sniff bike seats. What? <laughs> I'm not saying you do, Phil. I'm just saying, I'm filibustering! <laughs> Philip Davies' only hobbies, only hobbies are killing ladybirds and farting in lifts. <laughs> <laughs> it's filibustering. <laughs> 52 minutes of this I got. <laughs> The BBC would like to point out that Russell was true to his word and did talk bollocks for 52 minutes, but as this is a 28-minute show, we've had to fast-forward. And most importantly, Philip Davies can only get hard thinking about Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> yeah. 
What? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that filibustering shouldn't be allowed. We elect MPs to discuss things that matter to us, and this archaic bullshit has to stop. You might think he's great for droning on and on, but the edited version is far more interesting. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm an idiotic arsehole. <laughs> My guest tonight is the leader of the Liberal Democrats. Tim Farron has been elected to lead the Liberal Democrats, succeeding Nick Clegg, who resigned after the party's worst ever election result. Tim Farron will be unknown to most voters, but he's been a Liberal activist for decades. This may be a small step for Liberals. It's a giant leap for Leyland. He first stood for Parliament in 1992 against Theresa May, then worked at a university before winning in the Lake District. I am proud to be British, and I am proud of Britain's values. So when Mr Cameron turns his back on the needy and turns his back on our neighbours, I want the world to know he does not speak for me, he does not speak for us, he does not speak for Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Farron. <laughs> Uh, we were just chatting earlier, and uh, the last interview was it the last one you did was at a primary school, and there was I, a brilliant listen to the question yeah. he was asked by a kid. It's fantastic. They're the best best audiences anyway. So a seven year old uh, lad uh, said the primary school. He says, uh, "Have you met the Queen?" So yeah. Does she smell? <laughs> And the good oh, thing is... You can't prepare for those. No. <laughs> but she, fragrant is the answer, obviously. <laughs> I imagine she smells of just a bit of jupe. <laughs> Go on, Tim, give us a sniff. <laughs> Tell me that's not just right. You were there too? Yeah, I'd, I'd sniff her, yeah. <laughs> just Prince Philip. I smell of Lynx Africa, Jim. <laughs> nice. Um, First question I have to ask you, have you ever met Philip Davis? I have met Philip Davis. Can you do me a favour next time you see him? <laughs> just before he goes for a chat, can you put some laxatives in his drink <laughs> so that he can't talk for 93 minutes? He could talk for 93 minutes, he'd just be quite messy. <laughs> <laughs> how do we stop it? It's one, it's, I think it's the thing that really, it really annoys me, it really pisses off the audience, but how do we stop filibustering? Because it seems so undemocratic. I mean, I, what I don't understand is why you would bother doing that, yeah. particularly when it become, it's come down to sort of free car parking for carers or, you know, first aid in schools. Surely you get involved in politics to try and make a difference Absolutely. and to change things, not to waste your Friday standing up to spoil somebody else's yeah, motion. Exactly, man. I will applaud that. If you have a <laughs> As the leader of the, of the Lib Dems, I have to ask you, how is Nick Clegg? Because... <laughs> I have an image of him and Ed Miliband just meeting up and just weeping into their tea. <laughs> Do you know what? I think he's fine. I actually bumped into uh, uh, him and Ed Miliband talking to each other the other week, and they both really? <laughs> they both looked very relieved. Yeah, basically, Do you think? yeah, just I swapping mean, I think, mixtapes. I think it must be. Uh, yeah, I think that's what they do. I mean, he's all right. I saw him early, and he was fine. Good. And do you think it was a mistake? to go into coalition or not? I think we made some mistakes in coalition, but I didn't join to cop out. You know, if you're involved in politics, even yeah. if you choose a difficult route, which, frankly, ours is, yeah. you should want to be in power. But that's what I love about, about you, because... We, well, I don't mean this with any offence. It's, it's very unlikely that you're going to be Prime Minister, but you're trying... <laughs> you know, I am trying. But you're trying so hard, and that's why I admire it. Like, I was trying to think about what it's like, and it's a bit like my brother planning a date with Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. It's... <laughs> if it comes up. Correct. Yes. And that's exactly what my brother's plan is. <laughs> but it's never going to happen. And yet, he's thinking, maybe, just maybe, yeah, I could bang Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> you know, and, and, and he would need to be ready should the opportunity arise. Yeah, and um, that's, that's and, what I think of you now, uh, just readying yourself for Scarlett. I just... <laughs> It's an enduring image that takes some checking off. Uh, but I think the... Uh, a better way of putting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Probably a better way of putting it. Don't shake it uh, off, so I'll shake it off it before off. the date. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Right, we'll move on. <laughs> Why do you think people are so disillusioned with politicians? It's a tricky one. Uh, it? Somebody once said um, that nothing so disillusions the voter than backing the winning candidate. 
Uh, in other words, your hopes, generally speaking, aren't fulfilled. Now, I try, as a constituency MP, to try and sort of prove that wrong by over-delivering. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so, for example, you know, uh, <coughs> Justin Trudeau, the leader of the Liberal Party in Canada, just become Prime Minister of Canada, came from third place. They had a shocking election the previous time. So, my, you know, my hopes are very much on trying to emulate him in some way. He's got better hair and a tattoo. I can fix one of those things, but not the, uh, <laughs> not the hair. Do you want to get um, a tattoo tonight? I'll take you for a tat. Yes, wait, 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 any advice? I get a big one on the back. Yeah? Say says, what? Don't fuck with me. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay. And every time Philly Davis gets up, I just drop me top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be absolute... Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the reasons why people are disillusioned with politicians is that noise that a lot of them make in the House of Commons. That, uh, uh, because, yeah. that, uh, like, <laughs> it sounds like someone's doing something terrible to Brian Blessed, and yeah. yet. <laughs> but you, you never hear that noise in any other workplace. Why, why do they do it? Because we're all watching them go, stop making that noise. Um, I've never felt so common as the day I first entered the House of Commons. Yeah. There is a sense that the House of Commons feels like a public school, yeah, yeah. and a lot of these people, it probably reminds them of their school, and uh, they behave a little bit like they did when they were at that kind of school. Yeah. I didn't go to that kind of school. Yeah. <laughs> so you should just be, like, sort of egging them and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, we, uh, we make different noises. Uh, <laughs> what noises did you make at school? Probably gobbin noises, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, there's no uh, easy way of twisting this, but uh, what do we do about Syria? So there's no easy answer. Because <laughs> we're um, all terrified. Yeah. Um, I spent... Um, uh, some time over the last few months going to some of the refugee camps uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the Greek islands and at Calais, near uh, here, um, and you meet people, families, including really small kids, who have basically fled ISIS and have fled Assad. Um, and the one thing I'm certain we can't do is turn our back on them because it's too difficult. Yeah. It is a really important thing that we tackle. I am by instinct somebody who doesn't like the idea of war, but sometimes you have to intervene. And we've just got to look at the evidence in front of us. So Iran, Russia, uh, and, you know, the Western powers are all talking to each other. So that's the first time in ages that's happened. It probably yeah. wouldn't have happened without the Paris outrage. So the answer is talking together, but you can't rule out the prospect at some point of having to use some military force to take on, frankly, the most evil people since the Nazis. Yeah. Now, I've got... Here, I've got some <laughs> audience questions. Great. So this isn't on me, this is on our All audience right. here. Looking forward to it. Yep, these are going to be quick fire. Have you ever had a sexual encounter with a pig? No. <laughs> no. I <laughs> The morning that news um, uh, arrived on our uh, TV screens um, uh, was the morning I've never felt more happy to be a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's the first thing you do if you became Prime Minister? That's a good question. Uh, pinch myself. Um, uh, have a twirl around the chair a bit, probably, and uh, then I tackle the housing crisis. You know? uh, let's hope to God they record that. The, 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 <laughs> you gonna, uh, ah, that's spinning. Right, 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 let's get serious. Housing. <laughs> housing. <laughs> housing. Three, one one point six million people on a council house waiting list, and it's not fair. You need to build some more homes. Yeah, good man. A Christmas. This is an absolutely <laughs> wonderful question. This is from <laughs> Joseph. A yeah. Christmas. You've ever put drawing pins on the benches in the House of Lords just to see ten lords are leaping? <laughs> Do you actually like Russell Howard, or are you just here for the publicity? <laughs> it, 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 bit of both, really. <laughs> well, nice. No. Final question here. Final question here. What do you want to do with politics? Make a difference. We'll all be yeah. forgotten. If you try and set a legacy and you're trying to be remembered, it's completely vain. Yeah. It'll be in vain. You will never be remembered. But you can do some good. And providing affordable homes for people, trying to tackle climate change for our grandchildren, those sort of things, they're worth doing. Absolutely. There you go. That is an absolute treat. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Tim Farrell! <laughs> <laughs>
With the tagline, the penis can surprise you, the campaign features a giant penis creeping up on people in parks and cafes and spraying them with a golden shower of confetti. <laughs> Save sex. <laughs> Shall we hand out condoms? No! <laughs> Get Gunter to wear a dick costume and jizz glitter! <laughs> it's madness, that advert doesn't make you think about STDs. All it makes you think, how cool would it be to jizz glitter? <laughs> Parties would be amazing! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Greeting cards, love you, Nan. <laughs> he loves me! He loves me! Think about it. Spunk in the hair, yeah. <laughs> Glitter in the hair, <laughs> Boogie nights. <laughs> Mind you, it would be quite hard to convince your mum you hadn't been masturbating. What the bloody hell's this? <laughs> like a bomb's gone off in hobbycraft, you dirty bastard. <laughs> What's it mean, Marvel? What's it mean? Well, really, it's someone stamped on Tinkerbell. <laughs> Do you know what I love the most? I love how unbothered they are. Imagine that in England. Yeah, yeah, yeyeah. Finally, tonight is a lovely story that shows you're never too old to follow your dreams. On your mark. At Lee Valley Athletic Centre on Sunday, a new world record. The fastest 200-metre runner on earth in the over-95s category. Eugster rises from his blocks in lane number two. It was virtually a standing start. He's quickly upright and into his running. It's an economical style, not too much in terms of high knee lift. The arms aren't pumping. Charles Eugster's time of 55.48 seconds shaved 2.4 seconds off the previous record. I felt as if I was running like a young buck. <laughs> but when I saw the video, it looked to me as if I was one of those hundred-year-old tortoises trying to catch a female. His success suggests Charles was born to be a sprinter. It just took him 95 years to realise. I was always a very poor runner. I couldn't run. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a runner at all. The point was that um, I decided that it was about time to start something new. You can rebuild your body at old age. You can start something new at old age. You can even win a medal and break a record, regardless of age. Later this year, Charles hopes for another record at the World Masters Championships. At 95 years of age, the best could be yet to come. Thanks very much for watching the news. Good night, my friends. Good night. Farewell. Yeah. Thank you.